millions check into hotels each year. Some check into another dimension. My heart was racing, and I get this moment of terror. There is no way this was a dream. <laughs> and it was just boom, like the house shook. They wanted us out of there. When the experiences of thousands are contained within a single building, the laws of space and time are changed. Past invades the present, and fears turn to reality. Imagine finally finding the perfect place for your dream B&B, only to discover that there's already something inside. Dark, angry spirits with a single evil intention to send you running for your life. Nestled in Western New York's famous wine country, the Greystone Manor, built back in 1865, has sat empty for the last four years. But for its new owners, Heather and Bob Madison, it's a fresh start. That's a big old, massive 4,000 square foot house. It was just a beautiful place and uh, it was exactly what we were looking for. A perfect house to transform into their dream B&B. You know how they say houses pick you? Well, we felt strangely drawn to the place. Everything in the house is original. I mean, the house looks like it dropped right out of the sky from 1865. I forgot about that. It even comes with its very own Victorian cemetery. Often long ago, people would have a family plot, and they would bury their family members close to the house. So when you're looking at an old property, don't be surprised if there are graves nearby. And sometimes, where there are graves, there are spirits. Whoa, that wasn't me. A believer in the spirit world, Heather is immediately suspicious. So that right there, we're like, okay, something's weird. When people buy an old house to convert to a bed and breakfast, they do so at their own peril. You may be buying much more than just the walls and property. You may be buying also the entities that reside there. But Bob, a war vet, isn't about to be scared off. I've always been very skeptical as far as uh, the supernatural. It's just not believable. Over the next few weeks, as they fix the place up, Heather's feelings about the Greystone Manor only intensify. The feeling of being watched in the house is absolutely crazy. And you just felt like there was a crowd of people in there. And I kept turning around. I thought my husband came home from work early. What's going on? I didn't hear a car. And then I would get up and look, and there's nobody over there. It was really strange. I just felt like there was something there. We had been trying to renovate the first floor, and we had all the lumber and paint in the basement. I do not like the basement. It has a lot of strange energy to it. The 
basement stairs themselves were an open staircase. I kept feeling like someone was gonna grab my feet. And I grew up in a house with an open staircase. So it's not like I wasn't used to that. Many times we find that a house either undergoing renovation or getting new owners stirs things up and activity can pick up at quite a pace. Hello? I'm hearing whistling, like a tune. And it was so clear. It was just absolutely like someone was back there. Is someone there? This entity who is whistling at Heather, to me, that seems to be taunting. <gasps> Hello? You are perverting a normal, happy activity into a sign of evil. You definitely get the feeling that someone's back there. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Like, what is this? Hello? It was unsettling. It scared me. This is not an even playing field. And you're like a little mouse with a very large predator toying with you and you really have nowhere to run. But for Bob, it's just the quirks of an old creaky house. I have a mechanical engineering degree and, you know, I always tried to use the, the first principles of engineering to figure out what was going on. But later that night, that cold logic is put to the test. What the hell was that? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, there was the sound of an explosion. Something driven by very bad intentions. And it was just boom, like the house shook. It felt like we were under attack. At the Greystone Manor B&B in upstate New York, a malicious spirit seems determined to drive out its latest guests. New owners, Heather and Bob Madison. What the hell is that? The whole damn place is coming down. Having spent six years in the United States Army, it sounded like a grenade explosion. We thought for sure something bad, bad, bad had happened, you know? It's a big, very sturdy house. So when something like that happens, you, you take notice of it. We were afraid to go downstairs and look because we thought the furnace blew up. When you hear a deafening explosion, that's absolutely terrifying. This may be a very clear and loud warning sign. A paranormal shot across the bow. We can do anything. Listen to this. Now get out. Go in the basement. There's nothing's out of place. Nothing's moved at all. It was the weirdest thing. And there was no smoke, no, uh, no hole in the ground, no, 
There was absolutely no evidence anywhere of an explosion like that. It just makes no sense. The hardcore paranormal skeptic is thrown for a loop. What makes it even more terrifying is how do you explain a, a, a sound like that that actually makes the house move? At that point, there were things that I could no longer explain. It was a very scary experience. If these entities can get their hooks into you, if they can start to get the rise out of you that they want, there's no reason for them to have to stop. That explosion uh, opened my eyes. That was really the first indication that I got that something maybe paranormal or supernatural was going on there. Very worrisome are the spirits that intentionally seek to deceive when they communicate. That can lead to, to trouble, it can lead to potential danger. It was uh, like daily, you were hearing and seeing things all the time. It was overwhelming. It was like they were watching me. All of a sudden, my arm started to burn. This huge scratch started to appear on my arm. And it was puffing up and turning red. There's nothing more definitive than getting a wound. If this entity is diabolical enough to lure her into this situation, what else is it capable of doing? There's no limit. Heather has no doubt that spirits are sending her a message. So it was almost like they were warning me, like, we don't want you doing too much work in the house. We could hurt you a lot more than this. You know, almost like they were watching what I was doing. And a few days before the B&B's grand opening, the evil spirits take their bad intentions to the next level by targeting Bob. There was that feeling that something more aggressive would happen. We come home, and everything in the house is just shaking. What is happening? I think they're trying to scare us. Almost like territorial. I had a feeling like they wanted us out of there. Oh. Bob, are you OK? Yeah, I think uh, maybe. Uh. The ceramic welcome sign hit me on top of the head. It felt like they were targeting me. Oh. That was crazy. That scared the heck out of me. That was a very hair-raising, sort of a terrifying moment. From a spirit with a clear and steady goal. We're in poltergeist activity, and you are not welcome. Get out, or you will get hurt. Their dream of running a quaint countryside B&B &B is now on shaky ground. Maybe this B&B &B wasn't the best thing to do. There was that feeling that something more ominous might take place. There's no way you can open up a B&B &B in this kind of environment. You need to do something to make it livable for yourself and your guests.
To tackle their problem, they come up with a radical solution, a seance. Just because of the vibe of the house and keeping that authentic Victorian feel, we decided to do that. A seance is something like a spiritual peace negotiation. You are trying to get through to the other side. What is it you want? Why are we offending you? If they can communicate with the entity, maybe they can find out exactly why this entity doesn't want them to be in that location. It looked like someone had taken one of the tombstones from the graveyard and put it in the house as a decoration because they liked the way it looked. It's never a good idea to move something from a graveyard into your house. A graveyard is permeated with the energy of death. You do not want to bring that into your home. The name on the tombstone was Ben. Who is Ben? And I was asking him, can you tell us who Ben was? And soon, they make contact. Hello? And the root of the spirit's anger? The presence of the disinterred gravestone sitting in their B&B. I wondered if that was part of the reason why when we first moved in, the spirits that are in the house were so almost protective of the house. They wanted to make sure we weren't going to do anything crazy, like that kind of stuff. Hello? Who is Ben? He was Whatever was there was trying to make themselves known. My baby. He says it's so strong and like, he was our baby, like how dare you ask that? There was a clear message that Ben was their baby. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> this might be the pivotal moment in the entire haunting. It doesn't feel like it's happy. Kind of made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. At their Greystone Manor B&B in upstate New York, new owners Bob and Heather Madison have been terrorized by a spirit intent on restoring justice to the memory of a long lost child. He was a baby. There was an issue with a tombstone that was taken out of the backyard off the cemetery and brought into the house as a decoration. Doing something to somebody's beloved child's grave, that is certainly motive for angry reaction. To appease the angry spirit, they return the tombstone to its rightful place and owner. When this little boy died, we wanted to be able to see the grave from the house. Heather learns about the dark presence in their basement. Is someone there? I believe it's a very unhappy spirit. Hello? And he was a bad alcoholic. He was like the town drunk and he was very angry. And the reason for his rage? He was relegated to the basement against his wishes. I think this guy was more like a worker or a farmhand. <laughs> I definitely feel like there's like a class differential going on there. With a better understanding of the spirits that share their home, they finally open their B&B &B in a house where balance and serenity has been restored, more or less. I don't doubt what anybody else says. Now, when other people come to me and say, oh, I think my house is haunted, I hear this, and I'm like, I absolutely believe you. I'm less of a skeptic than I was before. I know that there are certain things that happen that can't be explained scientifically, so there's got to be some reason for it. It's almost like they want the history to come back alive. 
They want to keep their memory alive. Some dark spirits visit the living hoping to fix past mistakes. Others have more evil intentions, like targeting the young to feed off the power of their innocence. As one of the world's prime tourist destinations, New York City's Times Square draws all kinds, including some of the most cold-blooded predators to walk the earth, some of whom have died there but never left. In the middle of it all sits this quaint boutique hotel, where teenager Isabella Croce and her mother have come for a fun girl's weekend. My mom found the hotel online. It had pretty good reviews, and it was right in the city where we wanted to do a bunch of things. But right off the bat, something's not right. There was something strange about this place, and it wasn't just the odd decorations. Her mom has a different take. Is this great? Mm -hmm. I think that my mom picked the hotel just for the reason that it was a little different. After we had a day full of activities, we were beat. We ate in the hotel restaurant and then came back up to the room to sleep. I'm gonna sleep so well tonight, that is for sure. Sharing a room with my mom and being 13 definitely wasn't the ideal situation, but it was okay since it was just for one night. Good night, sweetie. Good night. The noise from the streets were definitely loud, and the hotel being a little creepy and a little off made it a lot harder to fall asleep. As the saying goes, New York City never sleeps. And that includes its dead. I woke up to this extremely loud buzzing noise. It sounded like it was right next to my ears. Ow. It was just about to the point of pain, and that was definitely starting to make me concerned. It was so loud. I had never heard anything like it before in my life. And somehow, only she can hear it. My mom slept through the entire thing. She didn't move or budge or look up at all. To have something constant like what Isabella is experiencing shows that there is a power behind this vibrational frequency. Suddenly, it's gone. The sound just completely stopped. There was no noise from cars on the street or people outside of the window. It was almost like my sense of hearing was like taken away from me. But I try and reason with myself when I notice something strange going on. I felt uneasy. Something was a little off. I'd never experienced anything like this. I looked at the closet and saw what I thought was a big, heavy jacket. There's only one problem. Neither she nor her mom brought a jacket. Suddenly, there was just an overwhelming sense of dread. 
I saw this tall, black shadow figure. There was no way this was a dream. I was fully awake, frozen in fear. I was absolutely terrified. In New York City for a weekend getaway, Isabella Croce and her mom check into a boutique hotel where the teenager is stalked by a creature with evil intentions. As it moved, it did grow in size. This thing was just standing over me. experienced anything so frightening. If an evil entity wants to corrupt something, the more innocent his victim, the more he will relish that evil process of harming that child. But whatever its evil intentions, Isabella's mother is also on its radar. My mom is in some sort of trance. She didn't move through the entire thing. I believe a negative entity that has that much power, that can put you in a very potentially dangerous situation. Slowly, it just moved across the room. I never had any clue if it was really, truly gone or not, but I just hoped that it was. Exhausted, Isabella sinks into a deep sleep. When I woke up that morning, I looked back on everything that had happened, and I still kind of tried to reason with myself. You okay? Just a little tired. Yeah, me too. I had the strangest dream last night. That's when my mom told me about this creepy dream that she had. It's, it was so weird. It was, I was asleep, but I was standing up in the closet. The way she told it was that she had a dream that we were in the hotel room. But there was this man lurking. When I opened my eyes, I, I saw this thing just sort of. She describes the very same specter that terrorized her daughter. Mom. Sometimes people are in a, a state of disbelief when they first start encountering paranormal activity. <sighs> anyway, I it was stupid. It was just a dream, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I was just blown away. She had seen the exact same thing that I had, just in a dream. Could be that this is how the entity chose to communicate with her on a subconscious level. The fact that we both saw the same figure is unbelievable. <laughs> at that moment, we thought this was a haunted hotel, and we had seen something really deep and dark. After I left the hotel, I thought this shadow figure experience was behind me, but it wasn't. The problem with evil intentions, they rarely ever go away. When I was about 14, I'd gone to a sleepaway camp. All right, no more than 30 minutes, and then we've got to go back to bed, all right? <laughs> You can call me coolest counselor ever. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> All right, go on. One of the nights, a counselor asked me and a couple of other kids if we wanted to go to the pool. Come on. Where is it? Just to the left. It there. was an indoor pool. And of course, we all said yes. What? OK. Don't panic. Um, Those big oh overhead lights turned off um, all of a sudden. 
There weren't really any other lights in the swimming pool area. Um, well, I guess that means swimming's canceled. Wait, I, I have a question. At that point, I wasn't entirely sure that I was in danger or there was something wrong. Figured maybe a janitor didn't realize people were swimming and turned the lights off for the night. But we were all starting to get scared. There was just something up. Let's make this quick. I want to get out of here. And even walking into the locker room, it had a strange, eerie vibe to it. Um, what happened? Um, it's nothing. It's just probably an old handle. But this door doesn't even have a lock. <laughs> OK, go, go, go. Go, let's go. Come on. After this door wouldn't budge, people were starting to get more upset, more panicked. Look at that. We were all scared. Is anybody there? The counselor tried to calm everyone down, but you know, once she said, hello, who's there, and no one responded. Hello? She started to get visibly upset. I swear, girls, if you're trying to pull some trick, you're going to get in real big trouble. Can I get that flashlight, Isabella? Suddenly, we saw something dart across the hallway. It was this shadow figure again. After being stalked in a New York City hotel by a dark, shadowy figure, teenager Isabella Croce once again finds herself the target of evil intentions. OK, go, go, go. This time at a summer camp full of young potential victims. Um, it wasn't only me that was affected by this entity. It seemed to be drawing more power from our fear. It wanted to scare as many people as possible. And the only reason the door was locked was because the shadow figure was keeping it locked. This entity wanted to trap us. It was almost like we were its prey. Everything was happening so fast. Everyone was running. And it was hard to really see much. Some feel that shadow figures were never human to begin with, but something that seems to have disdain for human beings. No one wants to have a frightening experience like that where you genuinely think that your life is in danger. Back home, Isabella tries to make sense of her two encounters. I research things like hauntings in the hotel or deaths in the hotel, and I couldn't find anything. But she does find a way to explain her mom's dream. This thing can travel into dreams and into real life as well. But what about her second encounter at camp? <laughs> Even though they don't appear to be related, what is a common denominator is Isabella. It's almost like I was marked by the first one. <laughs> and that, in turn, drew this other shadow figure out towards me. No. In haunted hotels, some dark spirits will try to make their evil intentions clear. In others, it's all about sending the message in the most disturbing way possible.
But in the English countryside, in an ancient hotel fit for a king, the only thing guest Emma Davies hopes for is that a night's stay will make the perfect gift for her husband. Okay. It was my husband's 30th birthday, so really looking forward to getting some time off and getting away together. My husband was quite excited about staying in the hotel as well. What do you think? It's amazing. You think so? I felt really relaxed and excited at the same time. So glad you liked it. But for Emma, that feeling doesn't last long. As we put our bags down, I did then start to feel a little bit uncomfortable. And I started to feel a little bit sick, a little bit overwhelmed. At first, I thought maybe I hadn't eaten enough that day or I hadn't drank enough water. So I just brushed it off as that. Shall we uh, grab a bite? Um, yeah, I'll freshen up. Right. It was my husband's birthday, so I wasn't going to start um, causing trouble because I didn't feel well. I started to feel cold and I felt really uneasy. It felt as though I was being watched. That started to feel a little bit creepy. Out of the corner of my eye, that's when I thought I saw a shadow. It's very unnerving to think that you are in a safe space and to know that somebody has invaded that private space. Hun, were you in here? No, in. Well, I'm in the bedroom. It's even more unnerving when you can't see whatever is invading that space because you never know when its eyes are on you. That's probably the first time that I felt that there was something more to this than just me and how I was feeling. There was definitely something else in the room. I knew that it was more than just a person. And I definitely knew it wasn't my husband. As a believer, Emma knows she's encountered something, but decides to keep it to herself. My husband is very skeptical. So I'm trying to push it at the back of my mind and not have too many emotions or feelings over it at that point. After a wonderful night on the town, Emma and her husband head back to the hotel. Me and my husband had a really lovely time. But in the room, the gloomy feeling lingers. I was kind of dreading going back up to the room. If the reaction is increased fear, that's only going to keep powering up the entity and giving it the ability to be able to do something else that will frighten you even more. I find that when we are staying away, I tend not to sleep very well. My husband falls asleep quite quickly. I hear footsteps go across the room. The atmosphere in the room had changed. I could sense that. And I felt cold. 
and I felt nervous. I have a feeling of dread. I'm trying to process what I'm hearing. Is it someone in our room? My heart was bracing and I was petrified. In a centuries-old English hotel, Emma Davies had hoped a holiday away would be the best gift for her husband's birthday. Until she's confronted by an invisible intruder with evil intentions. The footsteps have stopped. And I look around. It is dark. And I can't see too much. But then I notice a dark figure the size of my husband. What are you looking for, love? I called out to him, and there was no answer. Spirits are trying to get your attention, and if doing so means that they have to uh, kind of mimic or imitate the living, they'll do that. But then I notice the shape turn. It looked slightly hooded, but I couldn't be sure. Then, there's movement in the bed next to me. And I get this moment of terror. I can hear my heartbeat in my ears. And I look, and I see my husband in the bed. If my husband is in the bed, then what is in the room with us? <laughs> I feel as though my heart is going to come out of my chest. I'm frozen at that point. And that's when I knew it was something otherworldly. It was something paranormal. I feel panicked. The blood is draining from my body, and I am head to toe freezing cold. If it's an angry, evil spirit, that's the way it's going to act. And it has the energy to do so. But it does something unexpected. And as I looked round, there was nothing there. The figure had just vanished. That's when I jumped back into bed with my husband and tried to calm down. I didn't want to see it again. I didn't want to hear anything else. And I wasn't sure whether it was going to come back. And at that point in time, I, was, I just felt too scared. When we checked out of the hotel, I felt as though I'd been robbed a little bit of my, my break. And I was sad to go, but I was also relieved that I didn't have to spend another night in that room. <laughs> Emma later learns that centuries ago, the ancient hotel was home to those of royal blood. Thinking about the way that this location had been used in the past, you have a strong amount of male spirits that could be present there that would have no understanding why this common woman would be in that location. And a protector of the estate may be guarding it in the afterlife. Are you doing? could have remained there after death 
making sure that no one of a low birth would enter the grounds upon his watch. To them, she either doesn't belong or is a curiosity. Naturally, both of those cases will draw their attention. It had looked at me in the shower. It had already made me feel emotional. And it felt as though it waited until I was asleep to actually enter the room. There's just no doubt in my mind that there is something else out there. And there is something else after death, for sure.